Your Steve Jones Show podcast will start shortly. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Brewers Outlet, your beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And good afternoon. Welcome into the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. You can find us online at stevejonesshow.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Twitter handle at Steve Jones PSU. And you can subscribe to our Steve Jones Show podcast. It's available on both the Apple Podcast app and Google Play. So subscribe today. And our podcast page is at stevejonesshow.com. Three months worth of shows there in case you ever want to backpedal and relive some of the Great interviews that Steve has conducted, including a uh, really great one yesterday, uh, Layer of the Line, book uh, about uh, the complete history of Beaver Stadium and the two people that wrote that book. So a terrific interview there yesterday. Uh, we have that posted uh, on the podcast page and on Apple Podcast and Google Play. You can check that out over the holiday weekend. Big show today as we wrap up our short week with you. 335 Zach Showers, our Seals Grove Seals football stat man, the Z-man from Eagle 107. Uh, be with us at 335 as Seals Grove prepares to take on Bethlehem Catholic in the Quad A quarterfinals on Friday night at Kemp Memorial Stadium in Shemokin. Live coverage of that game will be on Eagle 107 at 107.3 beginning at 6 with game day and kickoff at 7. And then next hour. Oh, there is the voice. Hello. Of a person I am very thankful for. Feelings mutual, you. sir. You. <laughs> More than you'll ever know. <laughs> please, please, they pay you to say that. So just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, God. Nope, we are thankful for you, sir. The two best hours oh. of my day. <laughs> No, the hours you spend with Deb are better. So, it, and I hope she's doing well. I hope she has a great Thanksgiving because it hasn't been the easiest fall, it's especially when, you know, and, and, you know I, I think she's bounced back pretty well, which I'm glad to hear. Yeah, she is uh, craving a an awesome home-cooked meal tomorrow, so looking forward oh, to God. spending time with her and the fam. So it'll be fun. Wow. Because um, it's really – it's not a lot of fun in your life when – you have to have a little surgery or whatever, and you got a lot of good people saying, you're okay, everything all right, and then one saying, I had surgery. I had surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Not about you this time. <laughs> hmm. I was also given this card that I have to read. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm hearing about this for the first time. It's not from me. Dear Sean and Steve, I hope the two of you, based on your financial well-being, are thankful for the suit. (laughs) Sincerely, Daniel. (laughs) (laughs) A.K.A. Suit Light. (laughs) Yeah, I believe uh, maybe that happened over the weekend. Suit was picking up suit. Suit was picking up suit light. I don't know if that happened over the weekend or if that's today. I'm not sure. Hmm. Maybe well, it was over the weekend. Maybe it was Sunday. Well, a couple of quick things. Um, is he all set for the holiday party on the 16th? Yes, he's in. Good. <laughs> and make sure you that he knows in no uncertain terms that that it's it's the 16th at six. Led by block. <laughs> 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 oh, it's awfully lonely here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. So it is the day before. I, I We got back from Brooklyn at, oh, 2, 2.30. <laughs> We're going through. The buses cannot, buses and trucks are not allowed to go over the Brooklyn Bridge. So you have to take the Manhattan uh, Bridge. Okay. And you want to get to the Holland Tunnel. Now, I would have gone the Verrazano Bridge, but that's me. I'm, you know. Wait a minute. I travel a lot. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> so since they went a different route, how much longer of a commu- of, of a drive did it tack on to what, how long it would normally take you to drive it? We, we, left, we left at like quarter after nine. And we got home at, at after, I got, I walked in the house at like 210. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, I'd have taken, I would have taken the, the Verrazano Bridge, the Passaic Bridge, something. Get out of there. No. I mean, as soon as I saw we're going over the Manhattan Bridge, I'm like, no, no, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> so we're on Canal Street for an hour. Look it up on the map. Canal Street's not that long. <laughs> but we're, he wanted to go through the Holland Tunnel. Like, okay. When are yeah. they going to learn? They have to sit you behind the driver. Oh, no. I'll tell you right now. Jim Ferry. <laughs> Jim Ferry, the new assistant basketball coach. Okay. The former head coach at, uh, at uh, Duquesne. Mm-hmm. Jim coached at LIU Brooklyn. This was not a good trip for the driver. <laughs> <laughs> so even so, there was one more person in the bus that knew even had an even oh, clearer route than you did. Oh, he knew much. I mean, there are certain things. I mean, I've done baseball in Brooklyn before. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I've done baseball there. Right. Uh, so getting around Brooklyn, I've never had any trouble. Just there was so much traffic. Uh, to deal with, you know, it's the high, it's Tuesday before Thanksgiving. That normally Tuesday is normally actually the mass exodus day in cities, uh, and we saw it last night. Uh, but I, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, no, no, don't do this, don't do this. Oh, we're gonna go this way. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'd gone through that the Flatbush area before because I knew that's where Joe Paterno had grown up. So I mean, I'd gone through there before. Uh, Brooklyn Prep no longer exists, but the Barclays Center is right n- next to where Brooklyn Prep was. So, I mean, it's not like I, I don't know the area. I know the area. And I'm just thinking to myself, go south, get out of here. Go out. Oh, we're going to go through Manhattan. Great. Fabulous. <laughs> Sitting on the bus. and You know I can't sleep on buses. I tried. Believe me, I tried. And it's like, and you'd, you'd wake up on, eight, on, on I-80. 37 miles. Uh, and it's in on I 80 going west in New Jersey. It counts down. I wake up 37. Okay, go back down. 29. <laughs> 21. <laughs> like, okay. Come on. Do something where you wake up in Danville. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'm just trying to, like, like, all right, come on. Hang on. Hang on. Right, because I knew. I knew today I would have to. I had to yeah. tape. Yeah, full boat I, today. I, I had to tape a TV show this morning. I had to do the quarterback club today. I had to do something else one to three. Now I got this show. Then I'm going to go to practice, and we got the. Then we have the talk show tonight with James Franklin and Patrick Chambers both. So I'm done at seven. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking to myself, if you can get a couple minutes on the bus, I'd be like. Uh, so then, all right. The one sustained area I know, I I fell asleep. I fell asleep a little bit between Mile Run at one ninety nine, mm-hmm. and well, no, I, I woke up at one eighty five on that one. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're good for two exits. Mile run to Jersey Shore to Loganton, so you're good. Uh, I, I I went from I went from two twelve. Actually, I went from two twelve to one eighty five. That's, so that's bad. twenty. That's yeah. twenty seven miles. Yeah, that's about twenty. That, yeah, twenty five ish yeah, minutes. Yeah. Right. I'm like, okay. So I, I remember that because I remember going two twelve, and then I remember waking up one eighty five. I'm like, oh, 
All right, we'll skip my run. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I did go from 185 to 165. You're like, oh, all right. So I got a little bit, and then I stayed awake, you know, the rest of the way until we got into the uh, parking lot last night. I was like, holy mackerel. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember being in the Poconos, 309. Right, doze off. 302. Like, <laughs> seven <laughs> minutes? That's it? I went seven miles? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Because I, I can sleep on planes. I don't sleep well on buses. So the old Atlantic 10 days when Penn State bust all the time. Yeah, like, okay, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> Almost I'm, kind of reminiscent to my regular sleep pattern at night. 110, 225, oh, 340, yeah. oh. 450. <laughs> Brutal. Now when I get to 450, I can clock in another good two-plus hours. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless the cats make their way into the room and demand their breakfast. That's, sometimes that happens. <laughs> oh, I was doing like the, just the doze <laughs> off, doze off. And, and naturally, the one guy, the ticket guy, the only guy in the bus who has to have his light on so he can play his video game, is the guy sitting next to me on the, to the right <laughs> across the aisle. I'm like, turn your light off. <laughs> Come on. They played, you know what, they played well last night. They played very well. Now they didn't win, uh, which is in the end what you know. What is your success level? Did you win? Well, they didn't win, but they're mad that they lost. What I liked is that when Tony Carr and Lamar Stevens were both named to the All Tournament team, right? They went out with respect, accepted their awards, and they acted like, "Oh, this is what I want." And uh, I'm no, you know, I like that. They, they're mad they lost. Now Frank Williams. For Texas A&M, there were 30 NBA scouts there last night, and the 30 NBA scouts were looking at him. And you can you can see why he, he he's not a good face up player yet. And when I watched him against Oklahoma State the night before, and he was a little rusty the night before too. I hadn't played any games this season, but he tried a couple of face up jumpers, and he's just not a very good face up shooter. But when it comes to working within five to six feet of the basket, he is brilliant. And he's a great finisher, and he's an excellent rebounder. You know, watching him last night, he had 23. You can see why the NBA people love his athleticism, and you can see why they look at him as a great prospect. Tyler Davis, the all-SEC forward, probably another guy that falls into that category, too. Where I, look, he would not be a first round NBA pick, but he might get a look in the second round. He's a, he's a good player. In the Ken Pomeroy rankings, Ken Pomeroy who does all the analytics, and these are the ones really Dick and I look at. I, I don't look at, hey, they're fourth in the AP poll. Like, what the heck do I care? Right? Uh, but the Ken Palm rankings, that's what we look at. Texas AM was sixth going into the game in the nation. Penn State, by the way, 37. Now, after the loss, Penn State fell only three spots to 40. And they'll have Oral Roberts uh, Friday at 3 in this time slot. We'll take a break. We have our picks today. Huh? Have our picks. Including, a, you got, would you put one or two Thanksgiving Day games in there? Uh, I threw one in there. We got four college, two pro. Very nice. Yeah, I think I saw Cowboys and Chargers. I just saw the text. Yes. That's actually gonna. That's actually yeah. That's actually gonna be a good game. I think Detroit Minnesota is gonna be a really good game. To be honest with you. Let's see. Let's see what would you put in uh, for the two pros? Uh, two pro games: Chargers, Cowboys, and Saints Rams. So, Saints Rams is easy. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else you have here. You have Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, Auburn, Washington State, Washington, Notre Dame. Stanford, so all the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll come back with more in a moment. Uh, with Thanksgiving coming up, Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury on News Radio 1070 WKOK. <laughs> so I was telling Sean during the break, you know, for Christmas. My wife has always wanted a wood stove. Okay. I, of course, could care less. 
I, I, I don't care. So she's on the phone with the guy from Penwood. They're going with uh, in um, in Pleasant Gap. Penwood home and, and I Earth, walk yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And she says, "Do you have any questions for him?" I said, "I said, does it take wood?" <laughs> Why, well, yes, it does, Mr. Jones. It takes wood, oak, cherry, I said, maple. I said, good. I said, I said, can I use the junk in the backyard? I said, I don't like to cut my oak tree down. <laughs> I said, because it's spreading leaves everywhere and creating work. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be a win-win for everybody. Uh, she just said, she says, why do I bother? Because I do this all the time. <laughs> yeah, she'll want a car. And I'll say, I said, when you put it into drive, does it move? I said, yeah. I said, then we're in. She bought a refrigerator. I said, does it cool food? <laughs> she always says, do you have any questions? Does it cool food? Well, yes. I said, I'm done. <laughs> the man of integrity and simplicity. Oh my God. She says, You do that every time. I go, What? I said, I said, I said, You got to take care of the basics first. I said, I said, It's a refrigerator. Does it cool food? Yes. I said, Then we're in. I said, I could care less about this tray, that tray. I want to be able to put milk in there and wake up and not have it be sour. Sunbury Motors Ford knows it's the holiday season, and you need a dependable vehicle, but also need as much money left in your pocket as possible. Let's be honest, if somebody gives you way too much for your piece of junk trade or cash just for buying a car, who do you think is paying for it? You are! Come see why SMC has been selling more cars and satisfying more customers since 1915. Pick from over 100 2017 Ford F-Series trucks. Priced as low as $24,997. Choose from 42 2017 four-wheel drive escapes slashed as low as $19,975. At SMC, take $3,500 off all remaining 2017 Ford Explorers and get 0% financing for up to 72 months. Don't believe everyone else's hype. Sunbury Motors always gives you huge discounts, aggressive trade values, and the best financing options. And with over four city blocks of new Fords, they have what you're looking for. Sunbury Motors Ford in the Fourth Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury. It's turkey time. It's hunting time. It's brewer's outlet time. Genesee 12-pack cans only $4.95. Sam Adams 12-pack bottles just $14.95. Molson 24-pack bottles $19.95. Lots of imports, micro-brews, soda, snacks, lottery tickets, and of course, the brewer's outlet pickle bar. Wow, even more specials. New Belgium 15-pack $16.98. Red's Wicked 12-packs $9.95. The Beverage Supermarket has all your party needs, even gift cards. So don't forget the Jenny only $4.95 a 12-pack at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, Sunbury. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. All right, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. What's wrong with my questions? I don't know what's wrong with my questions. Get a wood stove. It burns wood, right? Yeah. I'm I'm just sitting here saying, look, install it. Let's move. Chop chop. <laughs> I've been around for days. I don't know what's going on. All right. Next uh, hour, we'll have our picks. Neil Coolong next hour. But first, well... Zach Showers is back with us again after they took apart Belfont. Zach, welcome back. Thanks for having me again. Belfont had a couple of starters out that did not hurt the Sealands Grove cause. What did you think of the overall performance? Um, again, it was very similar to Shikalimi. Uh, just came out and took care of business, very businesslike. Um, Belfont did have a couple plays offensively, but overall, Sealands Grove just uh, they made a lot of big plays in the passing game, uh, three long touchdown passes to Ricky Cope, and for the most part, they were able to shut down offensively or shut down Belfont offensively. Um, Belfont did move the ball a little bit, entered the red zone four times, but they were only able to come out of um, those four trips with three points, and uh, the Seals ended up holding Belfont to 
one of 12 on uh, third downs in the game. So pretty, pretty just dominant effort and uh, a game that very similar to the week before, um, having to deal with wind. This one had to deal with a lot of, uh, a lot of wet conditions, and Seelensgrove uh, very much handled that well. Uh, this is obviously not going – look, you get to this point, it's not going to be the easiest matchup anyway. You're at this point for a reason. So are they. What are a couple of areas in particular of concern this week? Um, looking at Bethlehem Catholic, they are just uh, – their strength of competition has been unbelievable um, playing in that area. Uh, both of their losses this season have been to 6A schools, including uh, 6A Parkland, who is currently ranked second in the state at uh, Pennsylvania's largest division. Um, probably the thing that stands out most for them is just their size up front. Uh, their offensive line is averaging 268 pounds per guy um, and are all anywhere from six foot to six four. Uh, so that's probably the, the biggest area of concern when you look at the game. Um, they have been able to run the ball very effectively, have over 3,000 yards on the season, and, and that's combined between three different guys um, primarily. So uh, they're able to do that, but they're actually very, very balanced as well. They have a senior quarterback, Javon Clements, who's thrown over for thrown over 2,100 yards on 57% passing. So when you look at their team, they are just – they're big, they're strong, they have weapons at every position. And defensively, they've um, only given up 28 points the past three weeks and have been strong against the running game. Uh, giving up just a little over 100 yards per game and 31 sacks, 92 tackles for losses. Um, you can really just look at numbers all day with them, um, but they have been they've been in a lot of tough games against really good competition. So, uh, Stones Grove is going to have a, a tough task on Friday night. They will, uh, but what are some things that that Seals Grove brings to the table that they have grown in confidence in? Um, we've talked a lot about balance, uh, being able to uh, finally uh, throughout the season, especially the past couple of weeks, to develop a running game. Uh, Joe Kahn, again, had over 100 yards last week and is over 1,000 yards on the season. Um, but uh, looking, at, looking at tape and um, just being around the team, uh, Bethlehem Catholic has given up some big plays in the passing game. They've given up 17 passing touchdowns on the season, which is quite a, quite a high number for um, a high school team. So I think this is a game, if, if Seelens Grove is going to stay in it and have a chance to uh, pull out a win, they're going to need to continue to make big plays in the passing game. Over the past couple of weeks, they've kind of slowed things down and ran the ball. Um, I think this is a week where you're really going to need Logan Leiby to shine, um, to, to drop back and maybe be one of those games where he throws – you know, attempts 40 passes and um, really continues to hit uh, Jared Inch and Ricky Cope, who have been his big play wide receivers all year. Do they need to shorten the game at all because of what they do, or do they need to run as many plays as possible? Um, I think maybe a little bit. Um, Bethlehem Catholic lately, and over the course of the season, has been a team that can control the clock with the running game. Um, so I think it's I think it's going to be more defensively making sure that um, they are not able to go on those you know ten, twelve, fifteen play drives and just eat up the clock um, and, and bring time of possession into the game. So. Um, yeah, it would be great if Seelens Grove could establish a, a running game and continue to be balanced, but I think this is a game where Seelens Grove is just going to need to make some big plays through the passing game um, to, to try to keep up with a, a pretty solid um, team in Bethlehem Catholic all across the board. Well, Zach, great work as always. Appreciate it, and hopefully we'll talk to you again next week because that means they would have won. Hey, that would be great. Thank you so much, and have a great Thanksgiving. Zach, you have a great Thanksgiving as well. We right. will come back and talk with Greg Pickle, PennLive.com, and the Patriot News in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Thanks to Zach Showers previewing uh, Sealands Grove, Bethlehem. Uh, Catholic coming up Friday night, Eagle 107. 
7 o'clock the kickoff, 6 o'clock the airtime with Pat O'Brien and Ryan Brandt. All right, let's uh, get to Penn State football now. Let's bring in from PennLive.com and the Patriot News, Greg Pickle. Greg, to you and yours, a happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate the time you're giving us today. Hey, Steve, always glad to be on with you, and happy early Thanksgiving to you as well. Thanks. Uh, we'll start with uh, the level of play of the team. What did you see on Saturday, especially in that area where they scored the five straight touchdowns and also combined that with the six straight three and outs? Yeah, you know, I think that we saw Penn State, uh, the same kind of efforts that we saw not only earlier in the season, but also against Michigan. And at times against Ohio State and Michigan State, we just saw it more consistently and throughout the game, I think, against Rutgers and Nebraska, and especially Nebraska as compared to those other two games that ended in two losses by a combined four points. So, you know, when things go well at scrimmage, things tend to go well everywhere else, and I think that was the case for Penn State against the Cornhuskers. And even though the final score maybe didn't reflect that as much as the yard count and everything else did, I think Penn State obviously put together a dominating feel-good performance for the final home game for a pretty impactful group of seniors. And now they get to go out and do it one more time, at least in the regular season, on the road down at Maryland. Then, of course, a bowl game for these guys as well. So I expect to see a lot of what we saw against uh, Nebraska this week against Maryland. Steve, I think they match up pretty well in this game, just like they did last week. Greg, uh, it's been the same group up front. The, you know, the five best available linemen for the last uh, what three weeks. Are you starting to see a little bit of cohesion with that group? I think a little bit, yeah. I think the fact that you know Ryan Bates was able to at least uh, stand around for warmups in his uniform, even though he didn't play, was an encouraging sign on two fronts. One that you know he might be getting close to a return, whether that's this week or at the bowl game, we'll have to wait and see. And then you know again that these guys are able to go out there and you know they it can obviously not every group is perfect, and this group has some moments where it certainly isn't, but. I think the fact of the matter is that these guys go out there and they, they throw everything they have at it a week in and week out. And, again, sometimes it just doesn't go so well. And then you have instances like against Nebraska where things fire on all cylinders. So they're able to limit the sacks, limit the tackles for loss, and help push for uh, 609 yards of total offense, which was obviously impressive. It doesn't happen without the kind of cohesion that, you know, not only us, but as, as media and, of course, the fans and the coaches looking for it but just uh, you know that group as well it finally all sort of clicked for them and now they have one more chance to go out and do it again uh your thoughts on maryland coming up this weekend well i think you know it's incredible that the level of injury they have at the quarterback position yet again this is the first time that's happened to them in the last five years and it seems to be a bit of a program issue for a long time i don't know what that says about anything down there other than the fact that it's unfortunate that you never really know how good they can be because it's a different team when the pig room kids playing or when kazim hill the one-time uh, penn state target and the quarterback out of uh maryland area there you know when he's playing they're a different team than when matt sportenschlager suits up there's just no way around it i think he's filled in admirably but he's just not at the level those guys are so i think you know, it's, you don't know exactly how good this team is. Obviously, the record tells you not very. They have a lot of issues defensively. So I think that just like against Nebraska, we'll see Penn State be able to take advantage of the fact that, you know, the defense they're facing is not exactly the strongest one that's ever been put on the football field. And then the other side of it, I don't think you'll see uh, Max Bortenschlager throw the way Tanner Lee did against Penn State's first team, second team, what have you. I think you'll see more of a performance like the first half for Penn State's defense would Nebraska have. Not very many yards in the first half. I think Maryland will not have many for the full game. I have a hard time seeing it being close, Steve. I just think that D.J. Durkin, the head coach down there, has things going in the correct direction, but I just don't know if uh, if he has it ready to go just quite yet. And, of course, when you have that many injuries at the quarterback position, there's very few programs that are going to be, weather- be able to weather that storm in the first place, let alone one like Maryland is still trying to piece all of the stuff together it needs to to try and take a step forward. Something that is new, of course, this year is the early signing der- date, which you follow very closely. And the first day is December 20th, and it runs through the 22nd. But almost all of them that are going to sign are going to sign on the 20th. Uh, what do you think this is doing for coaching decisions across the country? Because I thought Trace McSorley made a great point in his press conference earlier in the week about, you know, he had signed early with James Franklin, and then James would have taken the job at Penn State. Uh, so, you know, what do you think that's going to do for not not just the decisions made by those who are being recruited, but by colleges, universities, and the decisions they're making on coaches and when they make the moves? Well, yeah, athletic directors are going to have to think more and more about the, the fact that, you know, you, at times you used to want to try and play it out and say, okay, well, 
we better start our search before everybody else does so we get a leg up on the available coaching candidates. Well, now it's, oh, we better let this guy go so we don't get in a situation where, you know, we have all these kids signed to his recruiting class and then the new coach we bring in doesn't run a system anything like the one that he runs and now we have all these guys and all these pieces that don't fit and you set yourself back at least a year if not more so yeah i think you are seeing the you know that there haven't been too many moves made yet and i don't know if that's a sign that there aren't going to be many moves made or if it's just we're not at that point yet but i tell you what if you're not paying attention to it i think it's going to come and bite you i don't think there's any question about that and coaches sort of have to play the numbers too i mean if they have a kid that they're really recruiting hard but they also know they might move on and they think that kid could be a part of their next home how, what do they advise that kid to do? You know, what do they do? They try and slow play it and maybe hope that he waits until February to sign. And then if you leave, you can, t- you know, convince him to go with you. Kind of like uh, James Franklin did with Trace McSorley uh, and a couple other guys, of course, before this was even an option. But, you know, it's interesting to think about the Penn State senior class right now and what those guys, where those guys would have been had an early signing period been in place when, you know, Bill O'Brien left, but maybe signed some guys before he did so. And then, James Franklin had his guy signed at Vanderbilt and couldn't convince him to come up and fill out a class at Penn State in crunch time. So it's a fascinating thing to consider. I don't think you want to be on the end of this where you're firing a coach in January. And if Phil, you better find one that plays to a system that the guys are coming in play to. Otherwise, you're going to, like I said, set yourself back a bit. So it's interesting. It'll be fascinating to me to watch, Steve, how many of Penn State's 22 current verbal commitments decide to sign on December 20th, I think if the coaching staff had its way, that all 22 of them would sign, sealed, and delivered by, you know, 7.06 on that day. Well, you have a couple time zones to play with because it's 7 o'clock local time. But, um, you know, I think that in their world that they prefer to have all those guys locked up because then you spend January and February searching for however many spots you have left, whether it's one, two, or three, and then you get to recruit the 2019 class really in depth. Uh, uh, Terry Smith was on the phone with reporters talking about that the other day. So there won't be any rest for the weary in terms of the coaching staff, but it certainly would change how they focus their energy. I think that would be a good thing moving forward. But there's a lot to figure out here. James Franklin was asked about it recently, and he didn't – you know, he didn't hold back on the fact that what are you going to do? He was asked yesterday or during his Tuesday news conference about official visits and said, hey, we prefer him after the season. But what's going to happen now when kids want to come during camp, when they want to come during spring practice? How are you going to figure out all of these things and, and, and organize your time and make sure you maximize the time when the kids come to campus? It's a, I don't want to say it's a wild, wild west, but it's certainly a very – new situation for everyone and everyone's trying to figure it out the best they can and it'll lead to you know across the country some hurt feelings and some awkward decisions and so on and so forth but i think probably within a year or two this will become the norm i agree with james that this will become the normal national signing day in february will be more or less of an afterthought and it'll just speed everything up which has been a concern for a while now but we've already uh, sort of passed that point well basketball's been like that for years as to right. how you look at it so for you and covering it what changes, if any, have you had to make because this is the first time you as a reporter are dealing with it? You know, none really, to be honest with you. I mean, I think the the biggest thing will just be shifting the attention that we usually spent in uh, late January and early February uh, on the guys that are committed and planning to sign, whether that's trying to get out and talk to them, whether that's making sure that, you know, we know when they're signing, where they're signing, is there opportunity to go see them do so, et cetera. That was all taken care of in January, and now it's being – uh, taking care of in December. So I think that's really the only thing is and balancing the end of the season is, you know, it depends what happens. Last year, obviously, we were waiting until the final Saturday to book flights to Indi- or driving plans, whatever you have, to Indianapolis. Uh, so imagine last year, Steve, imagine if, you know, if you're Penn State and you find out on Saturday, the last Saturday of the season that you're playing in the Big Ten title game on December 3rd, uh, and you have, you know, maybe there were a handful of guys, final targets that you wanted to go watch or you wanted to go see, you know, in person. And, hey, guess what? Those plans aren't happening anymore. I remember Josh Gaddis put out a graphic of some sort last year that something that said something to the effect of, you know, sorry that we're not very active with recruiting right now, but we're fighting to win a Big Ten title or playing to win a Big Ten title, something like that. And uh, it was kind of, everyone just kind of chuckled because it was true, but it was, you know, they also had a whole – another uh, you know, basically two months to finish the class out well the, in this case the now you might only have three weeks if that so i think it's a lot for the coaches to take in for us in the media it's not that big of a deal but for the coaches and the kids and their families i think it certainly presents 
a crunch time that sort of sneaks up on you out of nowhere, especially if you're a high school kid. You know, think about Lamont Wade. He never made an official visit to Penn State last year because his season went so long. And then he signed, and all of a sudden it was about time to get to campus. So I think that the early enrollee process will be changing as well. Maybe less kids will do that based on how quick the turnaround time is. Of the you mentioned twenty two verbals, uh, you've you've you know you can do something I can't do. I can't contact them. You can. Uh, so when you've had at least some level of discussion, whether either a family member or them, do you feel that the, that they are twenty two rock solid guys? I do. Yeah. Now, will they all sign on uh, on December twentieth or sometime during that period? I think it's an interesting question because I do think you might get some kids that say, well. You know, uh, no, I have six uh, division FBS caliber caliber teammates, and they want to announce at All Star Games, and they want to do this big signing day ceremony on uh, the first Wednesday in February. I think it's the fourth this year, but I can't quite recall. But at any rate, you might get some kids like that, maybe down at Penn State, but I think it'll happen around the country where kids say, "Well, you know, I'm firmly committed to you, but I want to wait and have this special moment of signing with with these guys that I've grew up with and played with all my life." I don't want to be the only guy out on the island deciding uh, to, you know, put my name on paper right now, and I got this ceremony. It's all about me, and, you know, kids might still be playing for this, that, or the other thing. And, you know, I think you might get into some circumstances where kids want to wait to February, and it's not because they want to look around. It's not because they want to take official visits here and there. It's because of, uh, you know, some sort of reason, you know, close to them, family, friends, high school, teammates, whatever. And I think it's going to put the coaches in a tough position because, if a kid doesn't sign, then the default, or at least I would think the default, would be to say, okay, well, we're going to recruit your spot, and if we have one for you come February, the first Wednesday in February, we'll take you. But if not, you know, we're going to recruit uh, recruit out the class. But if you have a kid and you know this circumstance and you know why he wants to do it and you trust him and his family and his coaches and all that, then, you know, you're going to recruit that spot differently and you might recruit some other ones. So it'll be interesting, Steve. There's a lot to figure out here. I compare it in maybe not as quite a drastic of a way, but kind of like to the weather delay at Michigan State, where you never really planned for anything like this before. And we know how meticulous uh, James Franklin and, and coaches across the country are when it comes to planning. And Well, Greg, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Neil Kulong next hour, half hour picks final half hour. Today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury. You're listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury. You can hear us anywhere in the world with the Sunbury Broadcasting Corporation app.